Hello fellow collectors, I hope you are all doing wonderfully well. Today I continue my series where I talk about the best films I watched in the preceding month and now we're already into the first video for 2023. And so without any further ado let's jump right into it and talk about the best films I watched in January. The first one is one that people might be a bit tired of hearing about already, but I just couldn't help myself but put it on my list, and it's The Menu. I picked up a month of Disney Plus just really for two films in January, and this was the first one that I was keen to see. It's from 2022 and directed by Mark Malod and starring Ralph Fiennes, Nicholas Holt and Anya Taylor-Joy. I didn't really read anything about this one before I watched it, so I was not expecting what it turned out to be, which was a brilliantly done dark comedy. After I'd seen it, it reminded me a lot of another film I'd seen called The Art of Self-Defense, which did used to be on Netflix quite a while ago, and um, which was a karate film with Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots. Just another with some fantastic dark comedy in it, and I feel like together they would be a great double feature. The menu does a great job of drawing you in nice and normally, while just subtly hinting at what's really going on if you go back to see. I found myself accepting things, eccentricities I thought, of what I was watching because we all know that the culinary world is a bit of its own thing, being a foodie and into this sort of high cuisine comes with different expectations of the experience, the food and the style. Here in this film though it's all taken to the extreme and it's done in such a brilliantly almost slow burn sort of way. Things take a turn and it really balances the more serious nature of things while keeping the darkest of comedy alive and well during some of the more intense scenes. Nicholas Holt is the standout actor for me here, and that's saying a lot considering the calibre of other actors in this film with him. He does a great job, and I think starring in The Great, which is a TV show he stars in with Elle Fanning about Catherine the Great, where he plays a more comedic role, has really upped his sort of serious comedy skills. Overall, I just had a great time with this one, and the lingering aftertaste and overtones I found were particularly droll and delicious. Next, and we have undoubtedly the best film I saw the entire month, and something tells me it might just be the best film I watch all year for quite a while, and it's The Quiet Girl. From 2022 and directed by Colin Barade, it stars the excellent young Catherine Clinch in the main role, and also Carrie Browley and Andrew Bennett, as well as a good few others. It's an Irish language film, and the first that I think I've seen, though there is some English here and there as they switch between them at times. It's, as you might imagine, a fairly quiet and unassuming film at first. However, there are some real depths to this family drama. At its heart, I think it's a film about finding our place, and thereby finding love and acceptance. We follow the story of the titular quiet girl, who is from a large and unruly family. She gets sent to live with some distant relatives for the summer to help ease the burden on her bickering and fractured parents, who don't seem to be able or willing to give her the attention and care that she needs. And that's more or less where the story kicks off. However, there is more to this film than first meets the eye, and the story starts to open up as Kate herself starts to find out more about her adoptive guardians as the summer progresses. I thought that both Carrie Browley and Andrew Bennett do a brilliant job as the couple that she goes to live with, presenting this, I think, fairly realistic and uneven welcome at first. To together though, the three of them had brilliant chemistry and it was just a delight to watch. Overall, a deeply moving and emotional watch with some heartbreaking moments and some moments of triumph and great joy. Cares on Artificial Eye have released it on Blu-ray in the UK, and it's certainly one that I look forward to picking up at some point soon. Up next is a debut feature-length film from actor, writer and director Kit Zahauer. It's Actual People. From 2021 and starring, of course, Kit Zahauer and Scott Albrecht, Henry Fulton Winship and Isabel Barbier, as well as a whole host of others on the cast. Now one thing that I find I really dislike about so many modern films is that during the course of a single scene, even a simple one, they seem to feel this need to make about 10 cuts as the camera angle might chop and change multiple times, which I can often feel saps the life out of it. 
This film, however, was the antithesis of that. Scenes were allowed to play out and to breathe, with long, uninterrupted shots. It just delivered this wonderful sense of realism with all its awkwardness, moments of silence and nervous laughter. Interestingly, I thought there actually might be somewhat of an improvisational quality to it, as the scenes were so long, but I watched an interview with her and she said that it was almost entirely scripted as it was shot, which is just such an impressive feat. There's a particular pillow talk scene which I just thought was absolutely brilliant. Kit Zahawa, I think, is clearly a burgeoning great talent, writing, directing and starring in this. Her acting carries the film effortlessly, and the story itself perfectly captures what I think is a very common feeling of simmering breakdown during consecutive setbacks and difficulties. The film itself is set during the last week of university, but I think that the emotions and scenarios that the character goes through are pretty widely applicable. Overall, this one was just another very moving and powerful watch that really connected with me. And last but not least, we have Ingmar Bergman's Paps Magnum Opus and its Persona. From 1966 and starring B.B. Anderson and Liv Ullman, and of course directed by the one and only Ingmar Bergman. This was weird and wonderful and almost hypnotic. Bergman's ability to make the mundane riveting is perhaps unsurpassed. While directors like Powell and Pressberger managed to make the most mundane of stories riveting, Bergman seems to be able to make wordless and seemingly meandering scenes mesmerising. It was an incredibly interesting watch and grew in mystery as the film progressed. The film starts with a fairly unforgettable and highly art house introduction, and then we get into the story which follows an actor and her nurse as they go to stay alone on one of the Swedish islands for the summer. As to the rest of what happens, I think I'll leave that up to your interpretation of it. Almost immediately I read the sight and sound review slash discussion, and I also read up on it in the 1001 movies list. Interestingly, I think I had a slightly different take to what was talked about in both of those, so perhaps I got it wrong, though somewhere it did say that Bergman apparently didn't discuss it too much as he wanted it to be open to interpretation, so I'm hoping that I didn't just misread the entire film. As I was watching Persona, I just felt like if I watched it 20 times in a row, I would still have only scratched the surface. There's just so much to explore here, and so many small things that I know I must have missed. I really think with each rewatch of this film, the experience will be all the richer for it. And lastly, we're on to my honourable mentions. The first one is After Sun, which I enjoyed a lot, though not quite as much as many others seem to and then Harold and Maud, which I wasn't too sure about at first as it's incredibly dark, but it really grew on me and I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it at the end. And lastly, Al Hazar Balthazar, which I'm still digesting honestly, just a moving and really quite unique film. And that's everything from me. I hope that your 2023 has started brilliantly and that you were able to watch some excellent films in January. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.